What is going on guys? My name is Ben. How are you guys doing today? What I have for you today in this video is I'm going to show you guys the, the preview of iOS 9. Uh, iOS 9, excuse me. Now, the public beta was released yesterday, uh, July 9th. Uh, so, that's why I'm showing it to you now. But for those of you guys that are already developers and already seen iOS 9 in, uh, ahead of time, then you probably don't have to worry about this video. For no, But for those of you that are guy that are curious to see what the public beta is like, here is what it is. Now, I did wipe my iPod clean, restored it uh, completely clean on iOS 8.4, and then uh, I had to go down a profile in order to let me uh, install the iOS 9 beta. Uh, and I can restore it back to normal anytime I, if I want to. Uh, but for now, you know, this today was the first day I uh, got to use iOS 9, so without further ado, let's take a look. So the first thing I want to go over is, I already got a few apps right here, but no, we'll, no, we don't need to worry about those. It's one of Apple's new maps, the news app right here. Now, the news app right here is basically all it is is you can pick uh, articles and then read them uh, the, based on your interest. So, uh, you know, I got some technology articles right here, uh, and uh, that's pretty much it. When you first open the app for the first time, it's going to ask you to you know, pick some articles out. And for the beta, I believe it was limited to three or four. Uh, I was limited to a certain amount. I couldn't just go on and then pick as many as I want. But as you can see, for you right here, it gives you some um, stories that you know, are based off of the interest that you picked when you first opened the app. And then you have some f you know, the favorites tab right here, which you can pick your favorite you know, articles right here. You know, not sure why it shows all the other stuff right here. But this app I didn't really play around with too much because, uh, you know, uh, to me, like reading the news, I just uh, uh, go uh, look up the news if I find something very interesting uh, because I can't keep track of it uh, on a daily basis. So the news app, you know, you know, was not really for me. But for those of you guys that are really into the news and then read them every day and you always stay on track of it, great, this is the app for you. Um, and basically give you some suggested topics right here and you can pick out certain categories technology that's uh, something that of my interest right here and that's actually one of my uh, choices that I picked the verge and then there were some other ones right here but I forgot already I'm not sure if they were technology based or not and then of course search you can search for whatever articles you're looking for and then you can actually save them as well and then you have the history right here if you actually view them like actually this is one of uh, the articles that I viewed uh, to for testing purposes. This is from The Verge. PC market declines 10% ahead uh, of Windows 10 launch. And then you, know, you can basically just read on your way down and then the page doesn't load up, then it'll load up right here. Or in this case, it load up the web browser right here. Hit the back button right here and I can basically just go back uh, to the main menu, which is pretty much it. Now, let's take a look at the Notes application right here. So the Notes application is completely redesigned in addition with some uh, additional features right here. So how about we go to a new note right here, or new folder. Hit this one right here to create a new note. And basically I just uh, can just type in whatever I want. So we can do test. And one thing I noticed about iOS 9 now, well, ever since I installed it, you notice when I tap on the keys, it doesn't and make the key zoom in a little bit so you can see what you actually punched in. Now, I don't know if there's a setting where I can adjust that because I really like to do that because when I push a key, I want to know that I push the T key and actually see that I push it. You know, I don't want to just hover my finger over and then just tap and then guess because next thing you know I push a wrong key which happened to me you know one or two times already it's not much but it may happen repeatedly I don't know if that's a big deal to anybody but it is for me it's just personal preference pretty much alright and then you can actually do a checklist in the notes application right now meaning you can actually put actual bullets right here so as you can see I hit that plus button right there and I hit the text button right here. I can do body, which is what I'm doing right now, heading or title, bullet list, dash list, numbered list. And let's do bullet list. Done. And then I can hit test one, test 
two, test, three, and then the list just goes on and on and on, and then I can go to dash list, or numbered list, or heading, let's do heading, bolt it a little more, and let's do title. All right, eh, well, that's inappropriate, but well, we'll leave it at that. <laughs> so that, that's how it is for the checklist, and you can actually add in a photo as well. All right, you can add in a photo, or you can actually take a photo. So let's go ahead and take a photo, or actually, before we do, let's go into the photo library, because I do have a couple pictures already, and as you can see, here are the two pictures that I took. I was at Denny's this morning having breakfast, and... We'll put a different picture in there. And then, of course, you can delete the picture as well. You don't want it in your note. Let's actually take a picture right here. So we'll take uh, my lightning to uh, HDMI connector right there with a lightning charger uh, port. And then we'll basically just take this picture. So if you'll just excuse me for a minute. Alright, and there is the picture, so we'll hit use photo. And then basically I can now save photos into my notes right here. And then of course I can still keep the text as well. And what I can also do is add in some maps right here. So if we take a look at the maps application, which the maps application did get improved. I'll go over those after I'm done with the notes application. So let's go ahead and search... LAX, Los Angeles International Airport. All right. All right. So there's LAX, Los Angeles International Airport. And then, of course, I hit this button right here, the share button right there. And I can add it into a note right there. Now, I can uh, create a new note and keep that address in the map right there or I can choose a note right here so we're gonna do it in my test note and we're gonna hit save and there we go my maps is saved now if we go back to the notes application right here it should pop up right here there it is and then if I hit it it'll take me to the map but not kick me out of the notes app to get into the Apple Maps right there but I thought that looked a little different for a sec, but no, it was just zoomed in. Okay. <laughs> but as you can see right here, there's a back to notes no, text right there on the top left corner. I hit that, and I'm back into the notes application. So uh, that's how it is when you want to add uh, maps uh, to your notes. Now let's go into the Safari browser, because I'm going to show you uh, adding a URL into the notes application right here. So let's go to... Eh, we'll do Bing. I don't use Bing anyway, but we're going to do it for testing purposes or use it. Hit the share button again. And hit the notes application. And again, I can create a new note or uh, choose to save it to uh, an existing note. We're going to choose note. It's actually already selected, so we'll hit that and hit save. And... It should have saved it. So let's go back into Notetail right here. And as you can see, Bing is saved. And again, if I hit it, it'll launch Bing.com, but does not kick me out uh, of the Notes application because it's just back to Notes right here. I am back into the Notes application right here. And if you have iCloud enabled, uh, then uh, whatever changes you made into your particular note, is going to uh, update across all uh, your devices right there. And you can also add attachments uh, as well, such as documents. And so really, uh, the Notes app is actually more uh, convenient and actually more useful. And, and Apple is, is improving it a lot by adding in these additional features right here. All right. And so let's talk about the Maps application because Apple has made some improvements with the Maps application right here. Now, I'm not able to demonstrate these because the iPod Touch doesn't have a GPS in it. Plus, I'm not going anywhere at the moment, and I'm not taking public transportation, so I don't know how 
hmm, it's going to work out. But basically, in the Maps application, you can use a public transportation as your guide. So basically, you can have a route through a public transportation, and then you can actually see the lines and stations right there on the map itself. Every step is going to be laid out for you. Hmm. So now, I'm assuming that this is pretty much the benefit for drivers who drive public uh, buses uh, because uh, obviously they're going to need GPS as well but there are certain routes where uh, they can't go because it's not designated for uh, a public transportation or big trucks, uh, oil trucks, whatever. They're basically just designated for cars, uh, normal cars, SUVs, uh, little trucks. Uh, basically for uh, the consumer pretty much that uh, are just driving a regular car or a, le a regular motor vehicle. That's what I'm thinking the public transportation thing was for. Uh, other than that, uh, there's really not much to the Maps application. I don't use Apple Maps much. Uh, when I used to use my iPhone uh, like hardcore, I've always used uh, Google Maps because Apple's Maps, uh, I, I liked it at first, but then I just started to not uh, become a fan of it. But hey, you know, Apple is improving um, so they're pretty much uh, trying to improve uh, every mistake or uh, everything that people are not satisfied about. So let's talk about the wallet application right here. And this replaced the Passbook application, I believe. Uh, I believe that's what it was called. Passbook. Uh, because basically wallet, uh, all this does is you can make purchase with your uh, credit cards, like your store credit cards, your Discover card, uh, your Kohl's card, JCPenney, and then you can actually add in reward cards as well such as Dunkin Donuts, Walgreens, Balance, My Panera and all you have to do is double click the home button while your device is locked and actually use Apple Pay through this wallet app and then make your purchase but I believe that's only you know, with the devices that have touch ID capabilities in this case my iPod Touch right here does not have touch ID capabilities nor uh, can it even do it because I'm pretty sure for Apple Pay to work you have to be connected to the network so in this case this makes much more sense for the iPhones and the iPads with cellular connections because they uh, both of those devices have touch ID uh, capabilities not not to mention it holds your credit card information or ca any card information and I'm pretty sure you have to be connected to the internet in order to get access to those unless if it's saved directly to your device while that may be uh, a good thing that's a bad thing at the same time in case if you lost it your security is just blown out right there and even though no matter what any company does in order to make sure that whatever software or program they're implementing into their devices security is going to be breached somehow I mean Apple's iCloud service believe it or not got breached one time because and someone was able to you know, breach their iCloud server and then actually get to see pictures from other people's iCloud accounts Apple say, you know, it wasn't a breach, but hey, you know, no matter what, anything can be breached. So, uh, I, I just gave like a minute or two minute lecture about uh, uh, security. Did not uh, mean to do that, but yeah, basically, you basically find apps for the wallet application, and then you integrate it into this application, and then basically you just use your phone or iPad uh, to scan uh, your card that way without having to carry your, carry your wallet around. So that's pretty much it for the wallet application. Now let's talk about CarPlay. So CarPlay has been innovating a couple of years now. And for any car that supports wireless connections, you can take advantage of your device without having to plug it into a cable or into a port. So you can wirelessly control your phone through CarPlay as long as your car supports it. Now, as far as uh, iOS 9 with the iPad's productivity, I can't demonstrate it here on the iPod Touch, but basically you know, the iPad uh, gives you some additional capabilities such as using two apps simultaneously. You don't have to uh, double click uh, the home button to get into your multitasking uh, uh, menu and then select the app, go in one by one. No, you can actually have two apps running simultaneously and see them both simultaneously at the same time which unfortunately I don't have an iPad to show that so therefore I can't uh, demonstrate it for you guys and I apologize for that but don't have the money to spend on it and 
Speaking of multitasking, they have redesigned it for the iPhones and iPod Touches right here. So as you can see, this is what it looks like. And you basically just got the same functionality where uh, you, uh, not, you can't swipe down, but you can swipe up in order to close the app from running in the background. Or you can do two, or you can actually do three. And of course, one of them is not going to close, which is the home screen, because uh, the home screen and it can't be closed out in the background. Uh, not sure. I mean, that multitasking menu looks very nice. But let, let's say you have three apps. Well, uh, as you just seen, like more than two apps. We'll do the videos app, and you'll get why I'm doing this in a moment. All right, so we'll do three apps for now. I feel like this space is a little tight because. I can use, uh, I can do a triple gesture in order to close the uh, apps all at once. Such as, okay, take three fingers, make sure each finger is on each application, swipe up, and then uh, they're pretty much closed out of the background. I feel like that's a little uh, finicky. Like, if you're going to use the triple gestures to uh, close out your apps, uh, I feel like maybe they should have stuck with the uh, previous design. Or what they could have done is in this multitasking uh, menu is actually hit a button to close your apps that are running in the background simultaneously. Just close them all out with one button. And Android is already doing that with the recent uh, apps button. And basically I could just hit that X button uh, on the Samsung devices to uh, quit all my apps that are running in the background. Uh, but unfortunately iOS you have to uh, close them out one by one or you want to use uh, multiple gestures and once you can either close two uh, at the same time or three at the same time but you're going to do three at the same time I feel like this space is a little uh, tight because it's just not going to be uh, evened out and I can't move it around now because there's no other apps running in the background all right now let's talk about or actually one other thing I want to mention about the iTab is the quick type feature so quick type allows you to use shortcut keys in order to perform uh, certain functionalities which obviously I can't demonstrate it, but if you have a keyboard hooked up with your iPad and you want to perform uh, certain shortcut keys, there you go. Now let's talk about Siri. So Siri uh, has uh, gotten a lot smarter now. I don't know how often you guys use Siri, uh, but uh, it's, it's something that uh, you can use. But Siri, I don't really uh, use it that much because one, you have to be connected to the internet, and two, so uh, whenever I use my iPhone out in public and I'm not connected to the internet, it, Siri is just useless because it only operates when you're connected to the internet. Well, although it is nice to play around, have a nice conversation with it, say some bad uh, things to Siri, and then just see how she reacts. Uh, but basically, Siri can search for uh, uh, more topics uh, and can find uh, more answers for you. So it's trying to understand uh, uh, what you're trying to say. And you can ask it or uh, to show you videos or pictures from um, your uh, kid's birthday party. Or you can uh, have it remind you to, uh, let's say, uh, remind you to get uh, groceries uh, by 5 o'clock or at 5 o'clock. Alright, so Siri uh, has becoming a lot smarter and it's trying to get to know you and it's trying to help you uh, uh, look for your searches it's basically hunting for you all right and so let's actually demonstrate a, a series functionality here and I I wasn't able to test much because like I said I wiped this iPod clean and so I don't really have much stuff on it like as you can see all my apps are gone um, but I'm not gonna put those back yet uh, because just in case if I want to restore this back to iOS 8.4 then yeah, it'll all be there for me. So let's hold down the home button right here. Show me photos from this morning. Okay, and it's going to open up the Photos app and it's going to kind of show like the timeline and it's going to show those two pictures I took this morning at Denny's. There was my breakfast that I had. So basically, Sierra can do things like that. And it can suggest things to you, like suggest who uh, you should call. And then it gives you the option if you want to call that person or not. So that's pretty much it. And that's pretty much iOS 9. Now, what do I think about it so far? 
Well, here's the thing. There are a few things I want to go over because I was looking over at Apple's website and they were mentioning certain things such as one thing that I want to discuss is battery life. Apple claims that this is supposed to give you even longer battery life and it's supposed to be more efficient. Now, when Apple's release a software update, like a new generation of the mobile operating system, uh, a new version, that's what I mean. I don't. I feel like it degrades the performance of the device a little bit, and as the device gets older and running newer software, the slower or the buggier, the laggier it gets. Now, the iPod Touch 5th generation, I didn't notice a huge uh, difference in terms of bugginess, lagginess, you know, performance, but then again, that could be due to the fact that I wiped this thing clean. Would it have been any different if I just flat out downloaded the profile and then updated it or wait until fall and directly updated it because that's how I always do it with my iOS devices. I don't know. It could either run slower than how it is now or it could run decently and not too slow. I mean, here's the thing. I'm surprised that the iPhone 4S was able to get the upgrade for iOS 9. I'm curious to see how iOS 9 operates on the iPhone 4S because the iPhone 4S should have been done by now uh, on iOS 8.4. Because at a certain generation version of the uh, iOS operating system, Apple stopped supporting certain devices because the hardware just can't support it. And I was not expecting the 4S to support iOS 9 because the hardware is pretty much outdated right now in 2015 and it should not be running iOS 9 in my opinion, but then again, I didn't see how it runs so far, so I can't tell you how bad or good it is. But in terms of the battery life, I don't believe, I never believe that Apple improves the battery life with a new generation version of iOS. And here's the thing, look at my battery life right now, it's red. And, you know, I use this thing from time to time, but... I didn't use it as heavily, even though I had it with me as I was going out in public, out and about. But most of the time, I'm using my Galaxy Note 4 because that's my daily phone on a daily basis now. And it's running on AT&T service. Therefore, if I need to check something, I always go to that phone. iPod Touch 5th generation is not a phone, but that doesn't matter anyway. The fact that I left this thing on standby most of the time today and then from time to time I'll play with it for like maybe half an hour or so the battery life uh, just degrades a little bit and one thing I noticed is that in the settings of the iOS 9 operating system the iOS 9 beta and I'm hoping Apple will fix this because or maybe I just can't find it and uh, there's a manual for iOS 9 beta if you go into let me show you guys on the iPhone 5 right here so, if you go into the settings app right here, which uh, I should probably adjust the brightness here. Hopefully that's better. So, if you go into the settings right here, and then you go into general, you have usage right here, which tells you uh, the amount uh, of time you have used your device, and then as the battery life uh, starts to go down, it, it tells you how long you used it uh, for the battery life to go down that far. Now, if you go into iOS 9 right here, general, you do not see anything about usage right here. Now, you see storage and iCloud usage, but that is not the same right here. It gives you the amount of storage you use in iCloud, and it's just not the same. So, I'm a little disappointed to see that this the menu has gone away, because here's the thing. That menu really helps a lot. It helps me keep track of how long I've used my device and how I'm using my device so I can adjust myself on how I should be using it to give myself more battery life. And I'm disappointed that I can't see that, but I don't want to flat out say, okay, iOS 9 is completely done with it because I did send Apple some feedback with this feedback app right here. Because this, since this is the beta version, they want you to provide feedback for them. And 
I don't know how they're gonna look through the list of feedbacks because I'm sure there's a ton of people that are gonna list them and Apple's just gonna have too many to keep track of and to look at. They're gonna need like, uh, I'm probably saying this uh, in a stereotypical way. They probably need like dozens of people to you know, uh, look at it to get them all out uh, of the mailbox uh, within a day. And I don't know. I just feel like that that's like one of the key menus to look at in the settings application right here. I mean, and on my Galaxy Note 4, it has that same particular menu, but it's actually more detailed. So that's even better, believe it or not, because it gives you a graph. So basically, I don't know if Apple is completely being done with that in iOS 9. Hopefully the next beta version will have that menu back. And one thing about the notes application is now you have a recently deleted folder in case you wanted to delete it, a note. So we'll delete this one right here. And recently deleted, edit, select it, delete. And the recently deleted folder just disappears. So that's pretty much my first impressions of iOS 9. And the best part about iOS 9 is the updates don't require you to have a lot of space to update. iOS 9 is just 1.3 gigabytes. That's smaller than iOS 8 compared uh, with it being 4.58 gigabytes. And when you're trying to update your operating system each time, it was a complete disaster. Other than that, Apple's got improved security. And so six digit passcodes, two factor authentication. Uh, I mean, if you guys wanna uh, check out Apple's website, and for more information about iOS 9, go ahead. And so that's pretty much iOS 9. What do you guys think about it so far? Do you like what you've seen? How do I feel about it? Well, how do I feel about it really? Because iOS is still iOS. Now, you know, it's very simplistic, but it still has smartphone capabilities. It's for people that just want something to work versus Android where it's completely out of nowhere. And... Uh, for people who love to customize it, really dig into the operating system, you know, uh, really like all the detailed you know, menus that you see, then Android is for uh, those kind of people. iOS is for the kind of people that just want something to work and they don't care pretty much. Uh, because basically, if they don't really care for you know, what they need in a smartphone, they just want something to work, get on the internet, check some email, do social media, then iOS can do that for you, no problem. Windows Phone can too, but I've never used Windows Phone, so I can't say for how it works. So that's pretty much it. This video is about to be a half hour already, so guys, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe, rate, comment, and let me know if you guys are playing around with the iOS 9 public beta or the beta software since they first launched it for developers. What do you guys think of it so far? Do you like it? Do you hate it? Uh, do you uh, want to switch to Android because after what you've seen in iOS 9, you don't like it? Or you, know, you love iOS 9, it's flat out uh, awesome. You feel like battery life's improved. Maybe you want to give me some suggestions. I don't know. I'm just curious to see how iOS 9 is going to perform on my iPhone 5 right here with the crappy battery life it has. So uh, we'll see on what we can do about that. So thanks for watching. Uh, if you guys like this video, please rate it and check the description below for my social media links, Twitter and Instagram. I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.